Working with files in Python is an absolute breeze, mostly thanks to the Pathflip module and its great utility functions. It's a nice way to work with individual files, but it's primarily focused on reading and writing static files. And if you wanted to move files about or copy them, you'd have to manually read the source and write out to the destination, and you'd lose all associated metadata and permissions. That's where Python's shutil or shutil package comes in. Shutil is a package built into the standard library that focuses on high level file operations like move and copy. It even includes utility functions for making copies of entire nested directory structures, which is incredibly useful if you have a package containing file operations that all need unit testing. I'm going to get into all of that and more in this video. If you stick around to the end, I'll also show you how you can quickly create an application to archive and compress files with Shutil. Anyway, let's zip through this video and get those files moving. In this directory, we currently have a single module, fileops.py. It contains a single public function called increment number in file names, which basically does what it says on the tin. Given a directory path, this function will increment any numbers it finds in file names in that directory recursively. Despite how simple it is, this is actually incredibly useful. You might have files prefixed with a number for ordering, but you want to add something at the start of the list. It can be a pain to manually rename each and every one to increment the numbers by one, so this will help you out dramatically. This function doesn't actually use the shooter library, and will never need to, but what happens if we want to unit test it? Well, we could run it against some files locally and test the file names afterwards, but then we'd have to go back and manually decrement them again if we wanted to test a second time. Thankfully, we can get around all of this using the copy tree method from Shutil. Copy tree allows you to copy the entire contents of one directory into another. It runs recursively and can copy huge numbers of files, provided you have the disk space for it. We can combine this with the temporary directory object from the temp file package to create a testing directory that will be cleaned up when our program exits. Now we can write our tests, run pytest, and see that everything passes. So we can copy our files from one place to another, but that will leave the original tree where it is. If we wanted to clear that up afterwards, we have two options. The first would be to copy the entire tree, then delete the original. But if we have a large tree, we could end up using unnecessary disk space during the whole move operation. Unfortunately, Shutil doesn't come with a move tree function like it does for copying, but it does have a move function for single files, which we can use to write our own move tree. Under the hood, shutil.move copies the source file into the destination, then deletes the original. But since we're now doing this one by one, we should keep extra disk usage to a minimum. By default, move will use the shutil.copy2 function for copying, which will keep most of the file's metadata intact, depending on your OS, so you don't have to worry about changing permissions on the file after move. You can also change the copy function used if you like, but copy2 will be plenty good enough for most applications. Anyway, this is what my implementation of a move tree function looks like. It iterates through a directory, moving files and recursively calling itself to move subdirectories, much like the increment function from earlier. I've also written a test for this, but it's not particularly interesting. And you'll find a GitHub link in the description if you want to go over this in any more detail. While we're on the topic of moving, I think you should move your attention to that subscribe button and click on it, don't you? If you're doing a bit of spring cleaning, you might find it handy to know that Shutil does have a function to remove an entire directory, like I mentioned earlier. This function uses shutil.remove tree to delete any directories that are larger than a given size in bytes. It uses the shutil.diskUsage function to get the total size of the directory, and if the directory is too fat for its own good, we trim it away with Shutil remove tree, which will remove that directory and all of its children. The keen-eyed amongst you will have noticed that pathlib.path objects have a remove dir method that you can also use to delete a directory. However, this only works on empty directories, so Shutil comes to the rescue again here. At this point, we can copy entire directory trees, move files and directories, and delete things we don't want anymore. But what if I just want to copy a single file? Well, as I alluded to earlier, we can use the shutil.copy2 method for that. There's also shutil.copy, but why on earth would you use that when there's an alternative with a number in the name? Anyway, copy2 is basically identical to copy, but will attempt to preserve file metadata. In this function, we're copying any even-numbered files from one directory to a destination directory. Not particularly useful, but it serves as a good demonstration of copy2. And while I'm not using it here, most of the shootil functions, including copy2, will follow symbolic links by default, but you can disable this behavior. Well, this function is all well and good, but it only copies single files at a time. Time. What if I wanted to copy whole even numbered trees and do it recursively at that? You've already learned about copy tree, but prepare to have your mind blown. Copy tree has a parameter called ignore that takes a function. This function takes in a directory name and a list of its children and should return a list of any children that should be ignored. I've used all of that here to create a function that will only copy 
even number trees in a directory, and we'll do it recursively. Finally, before we get into archiving files with Shootil, I wanted to mention my favorite Shootil function of all. It's my favorite because, honestly, I have no idea why it's in this library, but it is, and I love its confidence. The function in question is get terminal size. As you'd expect, it returns a named tuple containing the number of lines and columns in the current terminal. It's surprisingly useful as it lets you write accurate terminal clearing functions like this one. Okay, okay, I promise you archiving, so here it is. Shootil has a method called makeArchive that takes in a directory path and an archive format and spits out an archived version of that directory. You can register your own archive functions too, which could be useful if you have a proprietary or arcane format that your company uses. The script takes a path to a directory, prompts the user for an archive format, and then, assuming all input is correct, archives the directory. If you've picked a compressed archive format, it will also do all the compression for you, which is great if you want to send something by email or just save a bit of money when you're backing up your files. There's also an unpack archive function that goes the other way, if you're into that. This video was intended as a bit of a deep dive into Shootil, but there are still things I haven't covered, such as copying only file metadata and ownership. So I'll leave the link to the docs in the description for anyone who fancies some light bedtime reading. If you're interested in the sort of things you can build with Shootil, I used it to create a super powerful project templating tool in Python called iTemple. You can find the video about that here.